you, you know, a lot of people ask, well, why did you do the roundup? They thought, well, since you're doing the roundup, a lot of people are expecting us to work them then there. And, and, and that's probably my fault for not explaining it very good. Yeah. Well, thank you. Good evening, Big Joe Herd. Just you guys. So we're just pulling into pasture one here. Where at the time we currently have the largest herd of the Cross Timbers Bison Ranch ever here at the Ponderosa. Thirty-two calf. Jackie, what are you doing out there? Hey guys, Dusty Baker of Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to the channel. There's a 32 calf and her crazy eyed mother. Got Jackie out here with us. We are, this is the largest herd at the, at the Ponderosa we've ever had. Here comes our big guy, Mr. Big Joe. I just pulled out here. I've got some uh, new protein tubs I got for him, just bought. And uh, they're 20% protein tubs that we like to put out for these guys during this time of the year. There's just not enough protein in that hay. We're gonna to talk to you about what's going on inside our hay. We got it tested uh, late this summer. Marissa and I took some samples, took it to our extension office. We got the results back. We're gonna go over that with you. Look at the cover crop field. It's so green over there. It's coming in. It's looking awesome. But these bison are healthy. These guys are being caught very soon. Gotta catch you up on a lot of stuff. I know we did the roundup with all the horses and the friends on the ATVs. We did all that fun stuff for the first time. Worked great. Well, now all these animals are here, including Big Joe right here. They're all in pasture one. Marissa and Eli are sitting out on the front porch of the barn, hanging out watching me film myself. And, uh, hey, Big Joe. And then we're staging these guys because the next thing is we're going to take them all the way up to the barn, which is not very far since they're here locked in the pasture one, which is about 17 acres or so. We've got their animals staged here because when they're caught, it's time to work them and actually run them through the squeeze chute. Doc will bring a system down and we'll get after it together. That's coming very soon. We're working them. So all the point of the roundup is bringing them all the way to the front. We had to get Dunbar caught. Hoss caught, the two females were putting in the sale, and now the next move is we're gonna actually work the animals. So let's put out some blocks real quick. Don't hit my truck. Ooh, look at that goodness. Oh yeah. He's gonna like that. But you gotta give me room. Mr. Joe. To do this. He's like, give me some of that. And let me dump it real quick. And I'll probably have to stand it up for you. 
course. Back up. Thank you. Flipped it over for me. For me. There you go. Pull there. What are you wanting? Hmm? You want one of them blocks, aren't you? I'm gonna put this tub over here, kind of space them out a little bit. I don't like to put the tubs close to each other because the dominant ones, of course, will take over one. It gives everybody a chance. Doesn't take too long. They can go through probably both tubs in two to three weeks. Just rolled out a fresh bell of prairie native hay here for everyone. Oh yeah, everybody's happy. Been rolling out uh, one of these nine or thousand pound bell of hay about, oh, about every other day we roll out a new one. And uh, this is what they do. They've been getting after it. Even the munchkins have been grazing it hard. Of course, so this time of the year, we've got a little bit, you can see some green in here. We've got a little bit of winter grasses that are coming in. They don't get very tall, but um, of course when the bison are grazing them, but uh, it's called cheat and brome. Uh, other than that, grass is all gone into dormancy, but uh, that's why we have all our hay. So I'm gonna talk to you about what's in our hay in just a second. Got those results back. Cole and I broke it down and tell you the protein and why I just put out those tubs, how all that goes. So just to get you guys caught up, I know you have probably lots of questions. You, you know, a lot of people ask, well, why did you do the roundup? They thought, well, since you're doing the roundup, a lot of people are expecting us to work them then there. And, and, and that's probably my fault for not explaining it very good. So basically, um, the reason why we rounded up those animals, uh, we had to get the Dunbar herd, which was in the very far back of the property. We had to get them all the way to the front. And in order to do that, we had to get the Big Joe herd caught up here at the barn in our pens, which is our corral system, our heavy duty um, corral that we have. And so we had to get them up basically so we could get Dunbar and the Hoss herd up with no issues of sharing going uh nose to nose face to face now at one point if you noticed in one of the recent videos uh after we 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 caught them and we rounded them up and then marissa and i sorted them and cole filmed it when we did that they did get face to face now the difference is getting face to face nose to nose dunbar and, and big joe face to face in a corral uh, with freestanding panels between them is way different than a cross fence, right? Barbed wire fence or an exterior fence. So that wasn't an issue. Now, Dunbar had already learned his lesson and was not even going to put up a fight. Big Joe is the dominant bison at the Cross Timbers Bison Ranch, aka Ponderosa. So now we've got this herd, which is Big Joe, the South Dakota females, which is 10 two year old heifers, 10 more wolverine females from canada and then some of the ones that we raised and the 16 females which includes texas cows cows that we started with in our first uh bison operation All right it's one giant herd basically is, is what we're at now and so the next step is because they're here in pasture one 
we just got to get them right up here to the barn catch them in our corral they're going to go to the blue feeder because that's what they like they know to go to the blue feeder and then from there right we'll be able to work them so that's kind of where we're at on all that so it's a pretty sunset i love fall i love this time of the year it's so pretty here at the ponderosa have a great view that's going to be the next big event so hold on tight folks because we're going to work them all and uh in that group we've got 13 babies some of the babies will come out and start the weaning process some of them are getting pretty big and need to come off of mama some of them were born late too late actually still have a little bit of cinnamon red color in them can't take them off yet they need to spend six or seven months with mama and really uh get that full mama's milk health uh, and be healthy enough during the winter to be pulled off these guys probably won't be pulled off until the spring and that's just a handful of them but there's a lot of these babies like some right back here that's a good weaning size there that's a good weaning size there that's a dang sure good weaning size there ready to come off of mama at six or seven months and so they'll be kept up here at the barn for a while to start that process once we work them and we say well dusty what is working well working is what we do twice a year here in uh, Oklahoma. It's basically where we bring all of them in and the adults will get their warmer, okay? Because uh, the parasite load in Oklahoma and this type of climate uh, can be heavy and, and uh, pretty, uh, it can be hard on these animals. So we definitely have to warm them once in the fall and once in the spring. Number two, the babies will get different vaccinations, uh, which is pretty common, same as uh, cattle. Calves, newborns get the same um, shots such as uh, black leg to prevent from diseases at such a young age. Our calves get the same thing. So, anyways, that's what's going on. We got our hay samples in, took our hay samples, Marissa did back in August, I believe. Got them tested, we got them back. Been wanting to talk about those with you. Cole and I did a little sit down segment going over our hay. Here's the results of that. We've got awesome people at our local extension office here in Murray County. We're taking samples for them so we know what they're getting over the winter. And then once you do that, once you get your protein, you know how much protein you're getting from uh, your bales of hay. Then you can, if you need a supplement, you can counteract with cubes. Do you need a 14% cube? Do you need a 20% cube? And you can figure out how much you need to feed your animals, depending on how much protein they're getting. She's out here just being a little turd, bored, T taking a look at our hay. Since we got our hay samples back, but <laughs> anyways, hang out with Cora, Cole, Maya's wanting to play some fetch. Oh. Anyways, this girl, she's a mess. So uh, Cora's been coming over here. She doesn't like this hay too much. She likes her alfalfa, which she gets especially just for her. Yeah, you get the, you get the really expensive hay. But since she's going over here, so Marissa and I came out here uh, about a month ago after getting all of our hay and we took some hay samples and it's starting to rain Yeah, protect the computer <laughs> oh, God. oh guys sorry we had to make a little quick move it is a little rainy day which is awesome but um got the atv pulled over here i really wanted to talk about this hay here today um and so what we did is marissa and i came out here about a month ago once we finally got all of our hay for the year at least here at the ponderosa we uh, came through and uh, we did core uh, hay samples of uh, and what we wanted to find out is our forage quality on this hay. So we took four samples of hay. One sample uh, came from old hay left over. We had five bales of hay left over from last year. And when we've got three other places where we have hay cut um, and two of the places are connected to us. They're right across from our one of them's connected to us, the other one's right across the road. And then another source of hay is from uh, the guy who cuts all of our hay, which is Richard. He got it um, from across the highway, actually. So all of our hay is native hay. That's what we try to get. Most of it is native hay. There's going to be some other stuff mixed, mixed in, but as you can call it prairie hay. So um, that's what we shoot for. We try not to get Johnson grass in it because we don't want the Johnson grass spread out on our property. 
but um, you're going to get some Johnson grass here in this part of Oklahoma as part of it. So we got our hay samples back. Um, we took our hay samples to the extension office here at Murray County, which is the OSU extension extension office, my alma mater. And uh, they, we basically sent those off. Roseanne at the office did, sent them off. And two weeks later, we got our samples. So here we are. Got my report here from Oklahoma State. And I also got a, a, a um, kind of forage quality interpretations uh, breakdown of what some of this stuff means. Now, because this is the first time Marissa and I have got these hay samples, it's kind of going to be a learning curve for us. So um, but the good thing is, is that we are interested in how much protein mainly that we're getting, um, in our hay from all these different places. And so what you can do is because we know the protein now, which I'm going to talk about, we can supplement other sources of food. Like we do cubes, um, which is a 14% cattle cube. You can do a 20% cattle cube, which is their candy, their cake, whatever you want to call it. And then you can also supplement with something that we like to use as tubs, uh, protein lick tubs. Um, but here, just a, just an example, we'll get a, give you a full description of this here just to show you what I'm looking at. There's 10 acres of next to us that we were able to get some hay off of. Um, and it was one of the highest protein um, sources that we got of native hay, and it was packed with native hay, which is right next to our hay meadow where Dunbar and the Hoss herd was. And uh, dry basis, we got 9.1% uh, percent of crude protein. Uh, and then as received, I don't know a whole lot about this. I'm not going to try to give you my expertise on this because this is the first time I've dealt with this and we've done it. But uh, as received, 8.3 crude protein. All right, so what that tells us, this is just on one example. Uh, from hay last year is what we've got right here. I guess that we did five samples because I forgot about the Billy Williams place. It was cut late. Um, old hay last year was 8.1% protein. So as time goes on, you think that the protein count, account would go down. Um, and then a place like literally right here, um, Cole happened to be up here this summer whenever Richard was cutting. He got some good footage of Richard cutting the hay. It actually had some of the lowest, which was, um, let me see here. It was 6.9. Yeah, it was a 6.9 to 6.3% protein. <laughs> Sorry, getting bothered back or <laughs> she's just in the way. Um, and there's a couple other breakdowns on this, uh, percentages. You've got, um, neutral detergent fiber. You've got, uh, net energy which can be broken down by maintenance. What do, how much protein do they need just to get by? How much protein do they need for lactation? If you got a bunch of mamas, so dairy cows probably. And then by net energy gain. If you want them to gain weight, how much protein do they need? And then how much do you need to supplement for? She's all up in your grill. <laughs> so there's lots of, get out of here. <laughs> Girl. She's just nosy. Hey, come here. Go eat your, your good hay. You get the good hay. What we can do with all this is basically know what's in our hay. Now, we what we did was we saw a reference on here. This is by Oklahoma State, and we're pretty sure it's either going off of alfalfa or fertilized Bermuda, but it says uh, on, on here, a good quality forage of protein, crude protein, is close to 20%. Now, you're going, well, Dusty, you're way off if you're half of that. So... If we're anywhere from seven to nine percent on all of our hay for that we're going to feed over this winter, you're like, well, that seems low, but that is off of a fertilized Bermuda or alfalfa, and we don't buy alfalfa for our bison. We go off of the prairie hay, and so what we can do is if we're averaging about let's say eight percent on all of our sources of our prairie hay that we have here, which is right behind me. This is a this is a chunk of it. You say, well, you got 8%. Well, you got to think about how much does how much do those animals need? A, a typically, just a cow need, uh, you, which our cows, okay, you can call bison cows, compared to cattle are about the same uh, as far as protein that they need. Um, depending on what, how much cow, we're going to say 20 to 25 pounds that your cow is going to consume a day. And then if you're going to look at the protein intake on that, they would probably need about, 
if it's if this is eight percent, okay, we're probably looking at two pounds of intake of protein that they would be getting if they're eating 20 to 25 pounds of dry forage, which is this right here. So there's 8% average of protein in this. So what you can do with all that, you know, all this information is you, if you want your cows or bulls, whatever it is to have higher protein, that's where you may have to supplement, which is what we do. We use the the tubs, which is the licks. Um, and you can say, well, I just want a 14% tub. I just want a 20%. You can get a 30% tub. You all can balance that out with what you're doing. Are you just maintaining for winter or are we trying to gain? So if you've got calves or yearlings, you're trying to put some weight gain on, you need to think about how much protein that they're getting. And with the forage samples that we got here, the forage quality, it tells us how much protein is in this. So what they're getting um, and then you can alter that. You can add to it, or if you just want them to eat hay and nothing else. But like we only give 14% cubes. Um, and so if you look at, okay, well, they're getting 14% cubes. Well, then how much are they getting when you spread it out on the field? Um, you know, if you've got, um, if you've got 20 bison and you're putting out a 50 pound bag, you're, you're going to say, well, okay, well, they're almost getting two pounds of cubes a day. Um, and so you really have to kind of quantify how much is all going into that. If you really want to do that and get into it, um, I'm not an expert at it. I give them cubes because I know that they need the supplement here with only 8% protein. Apparently that's good after talking to uh, Ethan, um, and, uh, around here for, for native hay. Um, so, so it has degraded since the spring a little bit. Yeah. So it, if we, just like Ethan said, if we had tested this native hay in early summer and clipped it and sent it in, you know, you're probably looking at, um, what, 10 to 12, 10 to 13. Yeah, you could have up to almost 15% protein on what this originally was. And so we're going to do that when the spring comes around in the early summer. We'll go out and clip um, some of our native grasses and it'll tell us how much protein is it that they're getting when they're actually out there grazing it, right? Because when you cut it and do all that and pack it in here, it loses some protein. But the fact that we have eight, roughly 8% 8 protein on our hay is good, apparently. Um, but here's something else that you need to think about. This is kind of a, throws a wrench in things. The higher protein that you give animals, and this is what others have taught me, and this is why we only give 14% cow cubes. We used to give 20 and we probably could get 20, but you can even get higher percentage tubs, protein tubs. You can get higher percentage cubes. The higher the protein that you're feeding them, like corn, like if you feed your animal straight corn, there's a lot of, that's a high energy protein. And so think about it. If you're feeding them a high energy protein, 30% or higher, then it, it churns their stomach and it wants them to eat more. It, it, it kind of forces them to eat more. So if you're feeding a higher protein to get them big and get them there fast, uh, that's great. But you also got to supplement them with some roughage. And so that's the bad thing about it. you're pumping that pro, uh, protein in them. You got to think it burns through their stomach and makes them want to eat more. So you got to find a balance. And I think we've comfortably found a balance. Our animals look healthy and um, it's whether you just want to maintain them or do we want to get some weight gain on them. That's what we want to look at. And for maintenance, just quick math, 1,000 pound bales, right? Yes. So 1,000 pound bales, mm -hmm. 50 bison, yep. need 20 pounds a day. That's two pounds each off of 8%. So with those bales, you need one of those bales per day. Just about. Yep. To average out 50 bison. And that's that doesn't include what they waste, right? Because when you roll it out in the pasture, we have to roll all of our hay out in the pasture, you're going to lose some. There's some, mat, some of this dry matter that's going to be lost. Um, because they're going to poop on it. They're going to lay on it. They're going to pee on it. And uh, you hope they consume as much as possible, but there's going to be some waste when you roll it out in the pasture. And we have to roll it out, like I said, because um, their hierarchy system, the pecking order, they will only let the dominant ones will get the forage if you just put it in a bale holder. And some of you are like, well, you won't waste the hay if you put it in a bale holder. Well, with bison, you can't do that. And if you want to put it in a bell holder, that means I need to go buy uh, five to ten bell holders, and then I have to put five to ten bales of hay out, and that's a lot of hay out at once. And you just hope that they consume it all, right? So we roll it out, and that's what's good. We like it. 
we can purchase our hay from other people, like right here, literally around us, and roll it out. And we know what's in it. It's native hay. That's what we pursue. And so that's why we're trying to be very minimal on Johnson grass. If it has Johnson grass in it, I won't buy it because I don't want it spread out on our pasture. So we're taking other people's nutrients and minerals and native seed that's built in this right here, right? And then we roll it out on our pastures. So there's a lot of good things about buying the hay and what saves us forage, like the hay meadow we were able to graze this year because of the Dunbar and Big Joe situation. So those are all things to look at. It's all by opinion. Every cattle rancher is different. Every bison rancher is different. That's just how we've done it here. And we're always open to uh, different opinions and 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 uh, see kind of how everybody else does it too because we may be open to different options. Um, so anyways, Cora gets the alfalfa. She gets the high protein. Um, so, but uh, anyways, the bison don't get it. But I know a lot of buddies up north that feed a lots of alfalfa hay. And guys, something else, when you think about it, it's how much money do you want to spend? Alfalfa is expensive. It's very rare kind of around here to get big, Square bales of alfalfa. We have to buy it at a local feed store in the little uh, three by three by eights. This is, let's just say, a it's a good value for what we can use it for. And so if we need to buy some extra because some's going to be wasted, but for the price of our prairie hay, our native hay here in this part of Oklahoma, it's it's a good price and it fits our system of business where we're not going out and spending thousands and thousands of dollars on very expensive hay. We can, af we can afford this and it fits in our program for what we do. And our animals are still very healthy. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not a petting zoo. It's not a nonprofit. It is a business. It so is a business. It's not, a, not necessarily how much money you want to spend. It's how much can you spend, like you just said. Right. In your budget to make it work. And if, if I wanted to go buy some 20% alfalfa, we probably could get it shipped in here from somewhere. Um, but that's going to cost a lot more than this. Another right drought and you could lose the ranch <laughs> if you're spending it all and yeah, stuff like that. Absolutely. So. so it's really what can fit in your budget. And the fact that we can get this hay right here, right here and over there. And I'm not kidding. We're touched all these pastures. There's one place where we got hay this year that's less than a mile from the road. That's the furthest place. The fact that we can get hay like that and it's native, it's what we want. Why not? Right? It's right here. And, and the bison love it. They love it. So if they're happy, then I'm happy. Mom is happy. Yep. <laughs> you know how it goes. Thank you guys for watching us. We'll see you guys next time.